Sari Cohen, and we are here with Matt Wolf, the director of Spaceship Earth. Matt, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm great, great. So let's talk about this film. I mean, I remember when this was happening in the 90s. I remember, obviously, Biodome came out in 96. I want to know what your interest is in this and what made you want to do it 25 years after. Well, I don't remember Biosphere 2. I was nine years old when the mission happened and it just was off my radar. And I was doing research for films online and I came across these really striking images of these people in bright red jumpsuits, almost like the band Devo, in front of an enormous glass pyramid. And I, I genuinely thought they were stills from a science fiction film, but it didn't take me long to figure out that this structure was real and that these people who had lived inside of it were still around. And so I was determined to tell their story. And, you know, unfortunately, Biosphere 2, during its day, became very controversial in the media. And as a result, it was kind of rebuked as this spectacular failure. And, you know, that black and white thinking always kind of raises my eyebrows. And when I started to look into this story, um, I saw a lot of layers and I thought, 25 years has passed pretty ripe for reappraisal. I mean, we're facing catastrophic climate change and who could have expected that? We too, like the Biospherians, are quarantined. And now we're in a position to look at this story and to, to really look at what the vision and aspiration of this project really was. What was the most surprising thing that you learned about it? I think the most surprising thing I learned was the origins of the pro project with this countercultural group who called themselves Synergists, who lived uh, on a commune in New Mexico. And um, they did all sorts of projects together, including building an enormous ship, which they used to travel the world and start all of these different businesses. And all of those projects kind of found their ultimate expression in Biosphere 2. But um, the film really follows the 50-year journey of this group. And they're an unexpected and idiosyncratic group of characters. And I found their story to be really inspiring. With the way that things are now, could you imagine something like this taking shape with the original vision? You know, I can in a certain way because futurist endeavors are pursued in the private sector now. There's people like Elon Musk. A lot of what Biosphere 2 was doing is similar to startups.com, outside of academic or government institutions, doing crazy futurist things that use technology to try to save the world. Um, but it went viral in a way that things didn't go viral before the internet. And I think that was to the detriment of the project, not to the benefit of it. And I think if we were today with the internet, a lot of the controversies surrounding this project might have not happened, but also maybe the project wouldn't have come to fruition either. But they were ahead of their time and the ideas they were interested in are things that other people are exploring on big, big scales, just like them right now. I mean, obviously the release of this is like universally ironic. I mean, what, what kind of, how would you imagine something like this taking shape in the 21st century? I don't know. Um, I think the spirit of idealism about um, figuring out how to live sustainably in a miniature world and having that be a, a model um, and an example for people to aspire to is really, I think, relevant. To me, there were lots of beautiful um, messages that were conveyed throughout this. I want to know what what would be the message, the main message that you hope audiences take away after seeing this? I think the main message that I really cling to is this idea that small groups are engines of change. That's something that the Biosphereian Mark Nelson says in the film. And it's really a unique model to look about, to look at our world today. I mean, after this whole thing subsides, we're not gonna re-enter the same world that we have quarantined from. Um, we're going to face a lot of challenges and a lot of uncertainty about what the future looks like. And more and more, it seems unlikely that we're going to reach a consensus on how to deal with it or that we'll even find leadership on a national scale. So we're going to have to rely on each other in smaller groups to do something about protecting our world. And the model in which these guys worked is really inspiring. They didn't necessarily already have the skills they learned by doing, and they didn't just talk about ideas, they put them into action. Absolutely, Matt, thank you for joining us. Neon will release Spaceship Earth on Hulu, video on demand, virtual cinemas, and participating drive-thrus on May 8th. 
Thanks again. Thanks so much for having me.